yo yo what's good guys okay so a lot of you have requested this video so i'm going to get this done and put it into perspective for you so you can understand how to trade the m pivots that we talk about in the streams all right so what are these zones now the zones that we're talking about in particular are the m4 right here m2 m1 m0 m3 and m5 now these m pivot points okay are the median of the standard pivot points of any asset that you decide to attach these indicators on all right now between the distances between each of these m pivots is exactly the same okay now it will vary for different assets of course so the more volatile ones they tend to be a bit wider sorry the more volatile prices they tend to be wider and the more congested prices they tend to be closer okay but the distance is exactly the same because they are the median of the standard support and resistance levels in in the charts okay so you would understand standard pivot points as you know support one support two and support three and then of course resistance ones would be resistance one two and three so the highest resistance would be three and then mid resistance would be r2 and then m3 will be r1 okay and then of course m2 will be support one because you've got the pivot point right here and then m1 will be support two and then m0 will be support three so again these are the median of the standard support and resistance points in any chosen asset that you attach these to now in order to learn know how to trade off these levels okay they are good at establishing confluences of certain support and resistance points in the chart that you're able to trade from okay so here's an example of a play today bitcoin on the 45 minute time frame we even it doesn't matter what time frame you look at it from but if you look at it from here you've got the m1 pivot point right here that has shown price come down during the asian session and during the start of the uk brinks all right they had formed a support range all right and then they moved away from that zone and they came all the way up towards the M3 pivot. So the idea is M1 equals M3, M2 equals M4, and M3 equals M5. So you project that when they hold this support zone right here, price would naturally, or sorry, break this point of resistance, price would on the assumption continue with the movement to the upside towards that projected point right here so you're literally taking the median of um, resistance one and trying to trade all the way up to the resistance three which is at the top right here which is known as m5 okay now it's not always going to be the case because you can see right here what actually happened was we wanted to see if they were going to break the m2 which they did they came down and retested the m2 and we would assume that in the same session that they would likely try and come from m2 and make their way towards m4 all right now at the start of every new session these zones change and they are based on the previous day's support and resistance or the median of those previous support and resistance points okay they're not static they change across each session OK, so you've got to be mindful of that because you might have on the chart the M4 as a zone that you expect Bitcoin to try and get up to. But then in the next session, the M4 zone might actually be lower because it will be based on the behavior of price action in this range. So just keep that in mind. OK, what's the best way to actually trade these ranges? Well, look, it's a number of confluences that need to come into play. You can't just blindly just take trades off the M1 and anticipate that they're going to continue higher from that point. Likewise, you can't make the assumption that price is just going to bounce off the M2 and make its way over to the M4. A number of things have to come into play. I mean, look what happened here. They've made the move to the M2, tested that pivot and moved all the way up. And then they snapped all the way back down and formed this wick on the hourly. And now they're stuck in and around the 50 EMA. All right. So price action right now has got really no volatility or no movement. So we're waiting to see what's going to happen with this zone. Okay. If Bitcoin can go from this point all the way up to the M4 pivot in the same session, then there will have to be a lot of price action for them to establish that. OK, but usually the best time to trade these M pivots is at the start of either the UK brinks 
or the US Brinks, because that's where the money movement happens. That's when the bigger moves are set up. As you can see, you can also trade to the downside with these pivots. You can also take the M3 pivot and assume that it's going to project all the way to the M1 zone. All right, because we're still in the current session. We've got what? Another three more hours until the Sydney session starts and the US session closes. And then another two more, yeah, three more hours after that. Sorry, we've got two more hours after that. We would then have the um, the start of the new daily open candle. All right, so these ranges would effectively reset, okay? Now, a couple of tips that you need to try and take into consideration with these zones. They can work great to establish if price is going to continue from that point or away from it. So in other words, look what happened here in the same session. The M3 pivot point had been rejected in this range. They come all the way down to the M1 zone. Now, if you had taken a trade from this area right here, solely off the idea that once the M1 zone has been confirmed and we project to the M3 pivot, you would have seen a successful trade. You could have got in at any instance. Check this out. You could have got in here. You could have got in here. You could have got in at the close of this. All right. But obviously, the closer you get towards the M3 pivot point, if the movement is going to continue, you know, you're missing out on quite a bit. All right. So ideally, you want to try and capture the move beforehand. Coupled with the idea of the vector candles currently in sight, you are solidifying the reason as to why M1 zone would move towards the M3 pivot zone. OK, so there's also other confluence that need to come into play. Don't just use these solely by themselves. A number of confluences have to come into play for you to say, yeah, OK, I'm going to take this trade. Look at down here. Yesterday's low showed some support. The M1 pivot point was right there. Price had deviated away from the 50 EMA. Two vector candle zones right here. They are. We are expecting them to try and come back up if the move is there for them to do so. OK. That's the best way for you to understand the pivot points. Now, depending on the asset that you decide to choose, you can actually run this across all sorts of assets. So check this out. Let's pull up, um, not Dogecoin. Let's have a look at top winners today. Let's just look at Theta, for example. So you can see how nice um, Theta is trading. Yeah. So from the M1 pivot point, we've got a nice move towards the M3 pivot. Okay. Because they confirmed it. They showed the support. At the M2 zone, they literally went straight away for it. All right. So just be mindful of this. If they completely break the range, you ideally want to be involved in the trade from the M1 zone rather than waiting for the M2 zone to test the support because you might miss out on this move to the upside. Notably, what they had done is they came to the highs up here, broke beyond the M3 pivot point and came back down to retest the pivot. OK, so what we had was the following. They came and tested the M3 pivot point. They moved away and finalized the M4 pivot, which would be the test of the M2 zone. OK, if you would have taken a trade from here and it and you were expecting it to go all the way to the M5 zone, you may have missed out on the big move because they've already made a move from the M1 zone. In other words, the zone was quite extended. So we were expecting them to come back and retrace. Coupled with the idea that the range daily high was in sight and the 800 EMA is showing a little bit of resistance, okay, and the US Brinks comes in, initiates a stop hunt rise and they pull back. In order for us to believe that price is going to continue higher, they naturally would need to start moving price upwards. But by the time they move price all the way up towards this zone, we might be at the start of a new session and these areas would then reset. So then this point would be potentially the pivot point and the M4 and M5 would be all the way up here. OK, so keep in mind that keep an eye out on that on this indicator itself, because all it does is it just labels off the median support and resistance points of the standard support and resistance zones. OK, best way to utilize these is when they start sitting in areas that we are familiar with that are going to help us understand intention by the market maker. So, for example, look at the pivot point where it is right here in theta. It's right at the range daily low. So if this move to the downside was to continue, it would have shown a little bit of support in this area or we would assume that it would have bounced from this zone and move away from it. So you could, by principle, open trades or longs in this area in anticipation that they're going to try and bounce away from that zone and continue higher. All right. 
the pivot point pretty much establishes that it can go in any direction. So wherever it breaks away from. So if it breaks from the pivot point and goes down lower, then you are projecting M2, M1 and M0 zones. Now, it's very, very rare that we do see the M0 zones only if price action decides to show some really crazy volatility. All right. But the really what you want to be projecting, I mean, you can as well also trade off the m0 in anticipation that the m2 zone is going to be taken so you can do that as well remember they are both they are all the same distance apart and it's wherever price ends up which is going to help you understand where it's likely to go based off the pivots now you can do it in the reverse as i said earlier you can go from the m4 pivot point and you can come all the way down to the m2 but be mindful what you want to be looking for is when you're trading downwards from the M pivots, try and stick to the next pivot point as your target profit zone. Why? Because if you're going to be in a short, okay, and it comes down and you're expecting the M2 zone to be taken, well, you should, you could actually end up giving money back onto the table and losing a trade because it would have come to the M3 and would bounce away from it because the intention is still there for them to move price higher. Okay. So keep an eye out on that basis when you're using these pivot levels. And I hope this le this lip video, oh, I'm losing my speech, man. I hope this video has served you guys well. Everyone has been asking for this video. So just be mindful when you are using these pivot points, okay? They are there as a guide to help you understand the, the likelihood of price bouncing from a particular point. Use them in confluence of things. So if the 50 EMA is right where the 5 and the 13 EMA is, sorry, here's an example. Look at this. Down here, you can see price action has come up above the 50 EMA and it came back down and tested the M2 pivot point ever so slightly and moved away from the range. That would be a good confluation point, confluence point for you to actually take a trade and see price moving to the upside. Coupled with the 5 and the 13 EMA and the psychological low price showing that it's rejecting that range, you, you know, you could be going long all day in this area and see some nice gain to the upside. Okay. I hope that video helps and serves you all. Mad love and respect to all you people passing through. We'll be going live again tonight at half past nine to quarter to ten to see what Bitcoin has done for us. I mean, looking at Bitcoin's price action right now. Look, man, what did we say? We said earlier on, in order for us to actually succeed in this game, we've got to improve the chances of a trade going in our favor. But the one thing that you need to be mindful of is this. If it looks like they're trying to do something and not follow through with it, it means they are setting up for something else. We said in order for us to believe that Bitcoin was going to go higher, it would need to break the daily open and the 200 EMA retrace and continuation to the upside. Well, they did just that. They broke the two the, um, the daily open. Man, what's going on in my speech, man? They broke the, uh, the daily open and then they reversed. But they didn't follow through with it. They just simply sent price back to the downside. OK, well, you can't blame them, really, given the fact that there was what? How many millions of dollars worth of longs getting liquidated in this zone? Let's have a look. For $65 million right there and $58 million worth of longs that had just been liquidated in that range. So you can't blame the market maker for coming back down, ladies and gentlemen. I'll catch up with you guys later on. Take care yourselves. Peace.